Hey, what's up? Welcome to Movie Dumpster Season 4, Episode 21. Today we're talking about Haunted Ween from 1991, directed by Doug Robertson. I'm Joel Escola. I'm Sean O'Rourke. I'm Connor uh, Cheeseburger with Fries McGraw. I, it's a, that's all I got, everybody. <laughs> Welcome to the dumpster. Chancy. I mean, this is Halloween. Isn't that when all the creepy things are supposed to stock the earth? It deals with demons. Demon resurrection of those forces which roam the forest and dark bowers of man's domain. The first few pages warn that these enduring creatures may lie dormant but are never truly dead. It's Halloween, gentlemen. Halloween! Have you forgotten? They're coming to get you, Barbara. You know, it's Halloween. I guess everyone's entitled to one good scare. Trick or treat. I'll, uh, I'll take a large uh, <laughs> meal, please, cheese burger. I'll take a large burger. Give me a burger burger. <laughs> I need a glass of burger. I need a burger bourbon. Yep, it's one of those nights, guys. It's. <laughs> He's cracking them, dude. You you at the fraternity, right? You're cracking those those Coors lights. Uh, if I was at that, fr- you know, after seeing this movie, I wish I was at a fraternity just doing keg stands for the next two or three hours because, uh, we'll get into it. But goddamn, yeah, man. And we're rolling right along with our trick or trash month. We got our second movie in the uh, in the cauldron for the month. Uh, and by the way, don't forget uh, to make sure that you listen to this whole episode because you got a secret code in there. You already got one from the Halloween episode. You get this one, you got one more. You get, that's three chances to win if you if you can submit all of those uh, secret codes because, you know, we're doing a little different this year. It's not a prize for each movie. It's one big, giant prize pack. So, and you'll have up to three chances to get, you know, you'll have three entries that will be put into the, the, the jack-o'-lantern, uh, the, you know, that we're going to pick out of the, the pumpkin bucket. So uh, increase your chances and uh, s- send in those uh, secret messages. Don't forget. Yeah, R- Richard Harris is going to run in screaming with that blue robe on. <laughs> Who put your name in the cauldron? Who put your name in the pumpkin bucket for movie dumpster? Is it a sin? To hit? What does he say? Is it a sin to hurt an animal? <laughs> Can you commit to sin against a pumpkin? Uh, well, we're going to find out. It's possible. It depends. You cut a hole in the back of it? Probably. Okay, and, and that's the show, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, don't forget, hey, leave us a five-star review on uh, Apple Podcasts, wherever you get your podcasts, would you please? That'd be very nice. We'd appreciate it. And if you want to jump to that Patreon, we got some uh, we got some tricks and some treats over there, wouldn't you say, fellas? On the 2 5 and $10 tiers. Oh, yeah. We got that junk mail video, the first mailbag uh, of us opening your stuff. And uh, every tier gets that, so head over and check that out. We got that mini-sode for Trick or Trash, either uh, out or coming out soon, the uh, steve Double feature. Oh yeah, baby, that's on that two dollar tier. So you don't even have to now. But you, you know, if you do want some extra swag, you can do that five or ten and support the show. That's that's a huge deal too. So up to you. But there's a lot of good stuff on that two dollar tier as well. Yeah, get yourself an MDT shirt on that ten dollar tier, and uh, come along for those watch alongs. We got that watch along at the end of the month. We're gonna be sitting down watching a little uh, MD classic. Oh, we sure are. Can't wait for that. <laughs> it, it, with with their costumes on, by the way. Yeah, it's gonna. It's a very special spooky edition of the watch along. If you've been following the Instagram a little bit, Joe had ran a poll uh, a little bit late last month about who he was going to dress up as. And uh, what were the options again, Joe? It was King Koopa or Kogashuko. And who won? Kogashuko won by a fucking landslide. That's, that still kind of shocks me. I figured people would want to see you turn your, turn your head into a bunch of fins. <laughs> I thought for sure Koopa was going to win, dude. I was surprised. Well, you know, the man's got a medallion, Joe, and uh, he's going to split into two fucking people and get taken out by a couple of chumps in a, in a vesiculated uh, nutsack. Well, let's see what happens when I put that medallion on. <laughs> you, can have a, you can have a gun out of Melissa Milano's ass just walk around with that yeah <laughs> you know what you're gonna have to do you're gonna have to watch that fucking watch along and see if Mil- Alyssa milano's ass makes an appearance it just might after this conversation it just it just may and don't forget if you go to moviedumpsterpodcast.com we have a store 
by the way, and we never mention it. That's why we're taking the time to, to tell you guys, because <laughs> we're like, we're, you know, we take it for granted that you guys are reading everything, but we're like, oh yeah, duh, uh, we don't we don't really talk about it much. But yeah, if you go over that uh, moviedumpsterpodcast.com and go to the store portion of it, and the Patreon, everything's there, and even links to uh, all your favorite podcast apps and where to get us. But uh, yeah, you head over to that store, and we have Trick or Trash t-shirts that you can grab uh artwork by the wonderful beautiful davy the scary cat deformed uh who put that together for us i'm actually wearing mine right now there you go i uh i told one of the doctors i work with after seeing him for the first time in a few years i was like yeah we're doing pretty good we got a store we sell towels and for some reason the towels thing he was like nice like i, <laughs> I was like I was like, I guess we're doing pretty good. <laughs> we do have a towel. Uh, John Johnny Browning bought one, and um, and Serge got one too. But yeah, I, right out of the gate, I don't hate this movie. I, in fact, I like this movie. Um, there's there's not too much backstory to this, so there's not there's not too much BTS to, to really dish out for you. So this is this might be a, a, a quick one. Hmm, that kind of parallels the movie itself, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, sure. <it> does. <laughs> well, I was gonna ask. Uh, that weirdly enough, this doesn't happen that often on this show, but this is a rare case where this movie only has an IMDb page. It doesn't have a Wikipedia page. If you look up Haunted Ween on Wikipedia, it just you get nothing. You get bleeding cool articles. You don't even you don't get a wiki and then on IMDb it's like there's just one text blurb that's really there and it's like it's maybe a handful of trivia. I didn't look, but like usually there's like at least one or two plot synopsis and then there's nothing. There's just one. <laughs> one of the one of the trivia is like the main char- the Mel, the main chick character is like this is her first movie and you look at like her credits and it's a bunch of shit no one's heard of. It's like Okay, I guess that's trivia, sure. <laughs> I don't think it matters. That's Blake Pickett, dude. That uh, She's in Dark Universe, uh, a Fred Olin Ray joint, dude. <laughs> oh, okay. And They Bite. She's in They Bite as well. You said Dark Universe. My brain was like, Dracula Untold? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> Abound. Hey, maybe maybe you saw her on Cinemax, dude, after 8 o'clock or after 9 o'clock. Possibly. She's in some softcore stuff, dude. <laughs> nah, there was, there was never an accessible, like, blurred Cinemax, like, in any TV I've ever, in any, in any house I've ever lived. Didn't. Oh, you were sit- you were you were like hanging on that channel with like the volume down where you just caught a boob or whatever when it was like all fuzzy. I used to watch wrestling pay per views like that if I couldn't get it, and like I would just listen to it like it was old timey radio, and every once in a while I could get a clear image of what was happening. <laughs> Dude, been do there, you, Connor. Do you guys remember doing that when you were kids? Oh man. Oh fuck yeah. Once in a blue moon, not too often, but definitely. Oh yeah, that was hilarious, man. You were or, or like if you had to sleep, I, we used to have sleepovers at my house and like try to do that because you know my folks would stay up but we'd be like in my bedroom like you know the tv on like low and sometimes we slept in the in the uh the living room and stuff where you know there was the actual playboy channel and some other shit or like cinemax or something like that and by the way we weren't like rich or anything my dad had one of those fucking black he was he used to be a cable guy so he had one of those <laughs> black boxes that got every fucking channel remember those oh yeah yeah and a friend of mine had one of those and that's how we watched brock lesnar versus the rock at SummerSlam 2003 <laughs> <laughs> so we got all those hbo and pay-per-view and all that good shit so back back when you can hack the fucking tv right yeah back when you could hack the movies if <laughs> you will <laughs> TM. That it feels like Tony's gonna come screaming through the wall with that kind of like transition. <laughs> like, but yeah, like like I was saying in the beginning. Now, th- okay, so this flick is the lowest of the budgets and the rarest of the 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 independent films. Okay, the, well, what what on earth would make you say that? No, it, it, well, here's the thing, dude. There's a lot of shitty movies that you have full access to. Let me tell you something. <laughs> Yeah, Pluto Nash always comes to mind. Or even, uh, what was that one we were going to do and just dumped it because it was so terrible? Axum. 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 You can find that fucking movie. That movie sucks. Like, yeah. like rip your eyes out. I can't watch this shit sucks, you know? Haunted Ween is like a weird, low-budget passion project thing. Now, so where I was going with that was, like, it's super hard to find. So I don't even think it's online anywhere. Um... Because I was looking and I didn't see it. It's not uploaded anywhere, which is kind of strange. It might be on YouTube, but I didn't look. Um, we all watched my VHS copy, well, the Rip. Naturally, Joe has a copy, of course. Well, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I'm a collector, and I, and I it, called the vault for a reason. Everybody, like, it's it's a fucking archive. Well, the, this again, this is my fucking sauce, man. Like this, this, these kinds of movies in particular, especially this, uh, this type. It is on YouTube if you do want to watch it. Okay, it is on YouTube. All right. I didn't look, but yeah, thank you. And yeah, it's a super rare tape. But before I get into that, so 
Doug Robertson is a Kentucky native, right? He wanted to make a horror movie, so he did. And he got the help of the entire community of Bowling Green, the, the, like, the, like the whole town, and a bunch of people from uh, Western Kentucky University College that he was going to at the time. And they made this fucking movie, dude, which is pretty incredible. That's cute. It's like the anti-Manos. Yeah, but it's pretty awesome, man. And they shot the whole thing on 16 millimeter film. You know, despite its low budget, I mean, we'll get we'll get into it. But like, this has a pretty high production value, uh, higher than you would think it does, especially with the sound and the lighting and stuff like that, and even the ca- uh, the camera movements and things. Um, I mean, it's no fucking Peter Jackson film, but you know, it, it's. Higher quality than you think you're getting into when you watch it, right? Uh, I will say I'm going to give all the kudos in the world to whoever did the music because by the end of it, I was like, just the music is so intense and so, I don't know, it's so comically good for some reason that I was laughing my ass off. Like, <sighs> I didn't really want to get into the music yet, but since you brought it up, I'm going to steal something from Connor that he break, breaks out every once in a while to describe how this music uh, made me feel it was like a cerebral bore to the fucking back of my head because <laughs> it's just the same riff over and over again it's like dun, 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 dun. oh in the beginning yeah. dun, 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 dun. <laughs> it is at some point it becomes like video game music where it's like i feel like i'm running out of time to finish the level is how this music is playing especially in the intro of the movie you know they in the opening credits they do this like 10 fucking times they have a scene Dun, 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 dun. And then they cut to the next, and they do it a bunch. It's like, oh my god, get me out of here! I'm kind of, I'm kind of into the music, but yeah, totally, Sean. Like the the the, the fucking credits start like 900 times, and every time the credit comes up, it's that same riff of. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> it's like it's like the end of Lord of the Rings, but it's the opening of the movie. It has its own goddamn theme song. Like haunted ween, the theme song. So I I'm into it. Oh my god! Yeah, yeah. Uh, yes, yes, it does. Yeah, I'm kind of into that. It does kind of start to turn into here in the darkness at some point, but... <laughs> kind of. Uh, there's more lyrics than that, though. True. It's got a couple more sentences. I like the big percussion track they just use for, like, the remainder of the movie at some point, because it sounds like either, like, it sounds like video game music or a Toyota commercial from the 90s, where someone's just talking over a car hitting fucking tight-ass turns, like... <laughs> oh, this movie is aggressively, you know, early 90s. Oh, well, it's 1991, man. It's that 80s bleed over that I love so much. Yes. You see it a lot in the hair in this. I didn't even know what year this came out when I was looking at it. I was like, ah, this could be anything. This could- <laughs> <laughs> it's that weird. It, it happens every like generation, dude. Like when you watch 80s movies, early, especially early ones, it, that's all 70s bleed over. And then like obviously in the in the early 90s, you get a bunch of that 80s bleed over. It's like flannels and tease hair. Yeah. Oh, dude, I'm into it. Tease that hair up. Get those giant fucking stonewashed jeans, those high waisted jeans. Sure. And those terrible vests. I hate those vests, though. The floral vests with that, 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 that you wear with a fucking white t-shirt? No thanks. So yeah, Doug Robertson makes this movie, again, with, with the whole town of Bowling Green and the uh, and the college, the university that was close by. And he, they, they make the movie, they finish it, and he opens up his own distribution company. Now, it's 1991, guys. Like... You know, going back to like something like Snapper, you know that that we talked about with uh, John Campapiano on his documentary Snapper, the uh, the Man Eating Turtle film that never got made. Go check that out, Ripe Review. It's a, it's that kind of situation where in it's super hard to. You think it's hard to make a movie now and get it distributed? It, it was nearly impossible then for like independent for an independent filmmaker to do this. So the 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 power of Everyone coming together and getting this made and supporting it and getting behind it enabled him to create his own distro company called Consumer Video. And not only that, but then press or uh, dub, I rather, t- uh, 2,500 copies of this on VHS. And then distributes 2,000 of them across the U.S. Like, that's that's a pretty amazing thing, especially for the early 90s. No budget fucking slasher from some fucking nobody in Kentucky, you know? Yeah, no, I I agree with the, everything you're saying, especially like you know getting this whole community together to make the movie. Like, it's impressive. Like, I'll I'll give them you know a round of applause for that. But like, it still doesn't save the movie for me. No, like, it's sure. Like, it, it's ha- I'm glad to hear it. I'm glad that everyone fucking busted their ass to make this. Look, this isn't a good movie. 
folks. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Let me make that quite clear. It's not a good movie, but it's it's an honest movie. Yes, I'll, I'll give it that. My philosophy has always been, like, the fact that any movie gets made and finished and, and seen by anybody, I think, is a fucking small miracle, so... Oh, absolutely, dude. Yeah, like, any movie, because it's fucking hard, and it takes time, and it takes lots of fucking resources. Oh, yeah, it sure does. So, like, it, it, to that point... The VHS is only 2,500 copies made, guys, and 2,000 of them get distributed uh, distributed all over the uh, the U.S., and um, that's why it's such a rare tape. I mean, does it have any, like, uh, intrinsic value for trade, like, at that point? There's only, you know, so many of them? You mean, like, for other movies in the community? Yeah, well, no, like, if like if you're a collector and, like, you like I have this tape and someone's like, holy shit, like, is there anybody who's after it and would pay a handsome price for it? Like, is it, does it have any monetary value? Yeah, 100%. Okay. I... Will not don't at, don't fucking message me because I'm not going to sell or trade my copy. No, yeah, and I was asking a pure curiosity. No, 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 sure, but like that's it's one of those things where like you know there are some some really cool collectors that just want to see movies that are kind of that and the in these films trade hands to everybody. But like I'm weird about it in terms of like if I took if it took a really long time for me to acquire something, I I don't want to just not give it away because of course it's going to somebody. Uh, uh, who appreciates it, but it, you know, it, there's a selfish quality to it where, like, I, I want to preserve it, I guess is what I'm saying. Oh, I'm holding on to Dragon Gate merchandise I got in 2009 that are falling apart and unwearable, but I'm like, no, it was the first U.S. show. Get away from me. <laughs> right, but, like, <laughs> it, it, you know, because I, there's not many grill tapes that I, that I have uh, or that I want, and I know Haunted Ween has to, is, are some people's grill tapes, but, like, you know there is monetary value in some of this stuff, and and you know I you know you hang on to that shit, uh, for sure. But it's not just that. Like again, like I I like to I I like to be this sort of like curator of this shit almost. You know what I mean? Like my my own for my own personal self to be like, oh yeah, I have that. I'm gonna watch that now. You know what I mean? That's entry number A dash seven one. Yeah. <laughs> But by fucking roll down the ladder across the you know that rolling ladder yeah yeah exactly it's like the, it's like the SCP archives like everything has a name and a number I I I like that kind of stuff and I like to have a library of films uh, especially you know the weird the weird ones that you know. Not many people have. I mean, look, I'm not the fucking last word in VHS or rare films. Like, I have friends that are, like, way, 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 uh, have have way more rare stuff than I do and way bigger collections and, and, uh, and stuff like that. So I'm, uh, I'm small potatoes compared to those guys, but, um, but, 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 I, but I enjoy it. You know what I mean? Like, I don't do it. <laughs> I'm not doing it to, I'm not investing in them, put it that way. Right. I mean, you you've got Munchie, and that's all that really matters, right? And I love that movie. I wouldn't, and and you know, it's not a super rare tape. He's like, ah, the backbone of my entire collection, Munchie. But like, it's not a super <laughs> rare tape. But I would never trade that either. Do you see what I'm saying? No, yeah, yeah no, exactly. Because I love it. Where the hell was I going with that? But yeah, it, it's it's a super rare tape. So uh, and and collectors are are after it, and and you know, it's one of those finds where somebody would put it up like I would never put it up on unless I was fucking on the skids and I could not pay anything and I was going to lose everything yeah I'd fucking sell it but like <laughs> <laughs> my copy of haunted we never knew yeah yeah no seriously but somebody would buy it but like I'm, I'm not the dude who would go to a garage sale and find it for a dollar and then put it on eBay for a thousand do you know what I'm saying yeah yeah it'd be like wow you score that that's great you know what I mean and if you don't even know what the fuck it is then you're an asshole for even doing that you know what I mean <laughs> Well, that kind of goes without saying. I could talk about the the, the ridiculous fucking uh, VHS culture that ha what it's turned into, and that, I could do that for fucking three hours about people like you know get the the new thing is to fucking get like common tapes like I don't know Back to the Future for instance, but if it, it's sealed right, so these fucking assholes they go and they get it graded and then they cut it, they try to sell it on eBay for like 10, 15 grand. It's like what? What are you talking about? You're you're talking to the guy that literally takes the sleeves off of DVDs and throws them immediately in the trash. So <laughs> oh, you're breaking my heart, dude. I hate those things. They get eliminated immediately. Oh, the slip cases. I I mean, like I look, I can take them or leave them, but if it comes with it, I like to keep them nice just because. So I had I have a, a slipcase for a Batman omnibus, and 
that thing is so massive that every time I put it down, it just kept damaging the slipcase until it eventually just broke. So, <laughs> oh, oh yeah, that's see sucks, now man. with with books that is shitty. Like I like them on my books, yeah. but when you gotta pull an extra thing off the fucking case to get to your movie, ah, uh, no, no, it takes two seconds. Goodbye. And there's one disc on top of the other one. It's not the disc you want. You're like, ah, who did this? Oh, you know what I used to hate, dude? Those fucking locking uh DVD cases where you have to like snap the two things. Oh, you know what? I you know what I did with all those? You threw you threw them out. <laughs> no, I just ripped the snaps off. Now you don't have to do that anymore. Sean's like everything I have is on a fucking CD spindle. Oh man, <laughs> spinning like the uh, spinning like a pizza or some shit on my finger. I just lost a piece of my soul, Connor, <laughs> to know that those 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 sweet discs aren't fucking protected. <laughs> ah, they're good enough. I also like to keep my stuff nice, so let's put it that way. The, okay, so the things I have that I've protected the most are speaking of Dragon Gate. I have um. Uh, pay-per-view rips from Japanese television that come complete with commercials. Oh, those are the best, dude. From, like, 2000 and, like, 2003 or, like, 2004 of Dragon Gate pay-per-views, and those are in a CD book that never even sees daylight. Like, it stays in a drawer, and it's, that's where it is. And, like, I think it's, like, maybe 15 to 20 shows, and that is my... I'm like, nope, that's where... That's the prize possession. That's... <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, that's kind of that's kind of it for, for, for the backstory of this, you know, uh... You know, Robertson wanted to make a movie, and he did, and he got the support of all the community, and it's fucking rad, and he released it. And that's more than I can say about any movie that I've done. Can't imagine saying, I, I grew up in a town that just got together and made a movie. I, I yeah, it, It's like the George Hardy thing, because he's like a dentist, right? He's like, oh yeah, I was in that movie, Troll. And it's like, yep, you sure were. like like You sure were, and we love you for it. <laughs> yeah. Well, he's a sweetheart, too. So yeah, so <laughs> which one of you guys want to plot crunch this flick? A, a, a kid named Berber, um... Uh, wants to be in a haunted house as an attraction or something or part of the the scare team Berber Meister Meister Berber yeah and uh bless you Meister Blanca with that fucking mask <laughs> he's got on and uh discovers that maybe he wants to murder people inside of Hall Halloween attractions while also being able to summon uh a Mjolnir that's actually a machete <laughs> <laughs> and then at some point, uh, he does do this and starts to terrorize people. But in between that, uh, there's 15 minutes of shit. Man, I, okay. <laughs> I will agree with you. Did you say 15 or 50? Because it was definitely 50. <laughs> 50. Oh, it's, oh, it's 50 minutes of who could give a shit. But some of it's charming. Way too much setup. I mean, if you even want to call some it's setup, some of it's just like faffing about. I'm just like, I don't think we know what the fuck we're doing. Uh, yeah, I was going to say... <laughs> They 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 have those plot points in the first five minutes after you know after the credits roll. It's like oh yeah, Mel likes uh, Kaminsky or the, okay. By the way, I don't really remember any of these people's names. So it's Kurt. It's Kurt. Oh, I I know I know blonde person. I know person who passes out from getting booped. I know uh, uh, male. I know male too. Um, and Berber and and Berber mom. <laughs> uh, uh, right. Okay. So. Our main two are Kurt and Mel. Kurt, yeah, Kurt is fucking Dime Store Kaminsky, dude. This is before he gets <laughs> he gets a job at the LEPD. Oh no! And, and fucks the gnome. This is why he acts the way he does and talks like that. He doesn't talk like that yet, but he will. I had an experience when I was younger. <laughs> <laughs> that it was from the electric shock therapy he gets in this movie. Have I ever told you about my fraternity that I'm absolutely <laughs> obsessed with? He's like he's like cross-eyed. He's like I was trapped in an electric chair for like thirty minutes or something. I was electrocuted three times. <laughs> And then I had a Zagnut. <laughs> I somehow let my fraternity fall behind almost $3,700 on the dues. Whoops. Hey, Gallagher, where's the gnome? <laughs> he's got shock and now he's like, yeah, Zagnut. <laughs> he has a fucking speech impediment. Yeah. So <laughs> that that was his Devo gun. Uh, and then we got then we got Mel. We talked about Mel already. Um, Mel's an interesting character. She might be like the only likable person in this whole movie, and even still, she's kind of annoying. Yeah, Blake Pickett, like we mentioned earlier. Um, she the blonde. Yeah, she is like diet Patricia Arquette, man. <laughs> I could see it. Well, she's she's also immortal, so that's what makes her special. Oh, um, she also she also kind of looks like Varvolf a little bit. Yeah, a little bit. 
Paul, you as a Varwolf. Oh, you as a Haunted Veen or what? Oh, no. It's Halloween house. <laughs> it's Haunted Veen house. And then we have our we have our killer. Yeah, we have our killer. We have our Bob Ross killer that we see his face like t once at the end of the movie. I swear to God, until we saw his goddamn face, I thought this was Colobos and fucking, you know, brought to life. Oh, dude, maybe it could be the, it could be Colobos beginnings. We don't know. We'll get to that ending. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, he said he, he's pretty good with a trap, you know? It's true. Yeah, so just, just I just want to talk about a, a little bit about the beginning. So, yeah, so like Sean said, this guy, Ed, this kid, Eddie, he's obsessed with, like, monster movies and, and horror movies and stuff uh, we learn, like, visually. This is what the uh, the parents from The Deadly Spawn were worried about. Oh, the, yes, right, exactly. There's, like, a family-owned haunted house, and, like, they won't let him scare people inside so he does this weird fucking john mcclain thing where he like crawls under the house and crawls through this fucking vent why does this house have fucking like air ventilation like die hard dude this 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 house is rigged like solid snake like would train yeah. here or something like it's got these full body sized like it's the width and height of a human being with plenty of space in between to just crawl around. <laughs> oh yeah, to be yeah, to be creepy underneath that house and he does. Um he ends up like scaring this girl. He like locks this chick in this, this little girl in this room and he's like he, I guess he just wants to scare her and he you know, he's bummed that he's not that he can't do that. But in doing so he's chasing her around this room and she accidentally impales herself on this like piece of wood. And it, like, freaks him out, but instead of him, like, being rocked by this situation, he just, like, pulls a magic machete out of nowhere and just starts hacking her up. I mean, that night was his first boner. Oh, I think so, yeah. Whoever holds this machete shall be worthy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he cuts her head off, apparently, and we don't actually see it. We just see him swinging and blood goes flying. Yeah, and he gets... The, the, I, I will say that the, the makeup and the gore in this is pretty fucking good, especially how low the budget is. When they break it out, it is. No, yeah, no, for sure. And, and it's because, you know, it, it really doesn't get cooking, like we said, till about 50, 50 minutes in. So yeah, so then him and his mom leave, and then like his mom, it's like twenty years later, and his mom has a heart attack, and he goes full <laughs> fucking. Uh, she she's like cooking dinner, and she comes outside, she's like I made your fucking stew, and then she just drops dead. <laughs> yeah, while well, he's out there chopping wood, yeah. it happens in a fucking blink too. She's like she's like Eddie, I'm making your dinner. The next shot she's in, she's dead. She just has a heart attack and dies. We get a full Vader. He he's on the on his knees yelling in the air. <laughs> no. He fucking loads up the truck and heads back to Beverly, dude. He fucking throws mommy in the back and uh, and he, you know, gets in his fucking creep Jeepers Creepers van. Gotta go bury you in your home in your childhood backyard. <laughs> hey, come on, mom, mom, we're going back to the fucking Berber house. Back, back to the fucking haunted mansion. <laughs> TM. And then, yeah, we get, like, 50 minutes of, like, this fraternity and, like, they need to raise money. They need to raise $3,700 because I, the university is going to revoke their membership to be a national fucking uh, fraternity or something. I was never in a fraternity, but my understanding is that, you know, a lot of the fraternities, they have, like, ones above them. Basically, it's, you know, they're they're almost like a, like a McDonald's franchising ad. It's like, oh, yeah, you're part of this fraternity. But if you don't give your money, you know, the kick-ups, you're basically out of here. It has nothing to do with the college, per se, but... So it's a pyramid scheme. Yeah, they're they're, they're totally being scammed. <laughs> I guess, technically. Yeah, it's like the skulls, right? Like, charging these assholes, like, rent on just on the name to yeah. be a fraternity. Because these guys live in, like, a fucking farmhouse or some shit. Right. I mean, I couldn't be mistaken about that, but I think that's the idea. And then if they don't pay their dues, then because they're no longer considered a fraternity, they don't get away with as much shit at the college. I, question mark. I could ask my brother. He was in one, but, you know, I, I could report back on the next episode. Oh, man. Is he a Freemason now? I, I have no idea. Is he Illuminati? Maybe. He might be. Watch his eyes. Watch his eyes. Ask him who Jack the Ripper was. But, yeah, it's like, like, we're not even exaggerating. It's like the 50-minute mark. They finally, like... Because they have this whole, like, drama, Mel and fucking Kurt, like, she's gonna break up with him, but really, she's just trying to, like, get him to, like, chase after her, and then yeah. they, they go fucking tanning. Like, her dialogue consists of, like, oh, Ch what's his name, Ched? Chat? Sure. Kurt. Kurt. Oh, yeah. Oh, Kurt, you don't pay attention en enough to me, and I love you, and you're, uh, you're ignoring me. Can you not ignore me? And he's like, yeah, whatever, maybe. And that's it. 
Every interaction is that. Sigma Phi! <laughs> Their whole relationship is Wole Wonthe. Yeah. So then they finally, like, at, uh, again, not to keep saying it, but at the fucking 45, 50 mark, they come across the old fucking haunted house, and he's like, Ow! Oh, yeah, you know what, actually, this would make a pretty good haunted house. We're just going to break into this fucking abandoned building where uh, this little girl was murdered 20 years ago, and we're just going to do this without a permit or anything. Yeah! Okay, so they're trying... First, they have, like, a, uh, um... Like a party. And they have a party, and they're charging people, like, $3 a head to come in or whatever. Which, by the way, would it, would it, would it take, like, 1,200 fucking people <laughs> to, like, make yeah. make the money they need? <laughs> $3 a head in that small-ass town? Yeah. My favorite character, but also my least favorite character, if that even makes any goddamn sense, is this fucking Screech knockoff Hank. Dude, that is Jeff Foxworthy without his fucking mustache, dude. <laughs> this guy, he's pretty funny, but his voice is just so goddamn grating. Oh, is he the... the the excited southerner basically is what like i yes, would call him yes. okay he sound every time i he opened his mouth i was like that reminds me of sean doing gramps <laughs> like, hey how you doing out there i cooked him like a bungoon steak hey make sure you give me that five dollars <laughs> i'm gonna make a fortune he's walking around in a butler's outfit at one point and he's like fucking handing a chick a ten dollar bill he's foghorn leg horning all over the place oh it's uh, he's he's pretty funny uh, there, there are some funny bits to this that I laughed out loud at. Um, did anybody else catch the fucking, uh, Kentucky Fried Pee Wee with the fucking bolo tie? No. Oh, dude, I will, we gotta make a post of that. He has two scenes in this movie, one at the party and one where he's on fucking, uh, Kevin Dillon Light's van later. Uh, Kevin Dillon has already met Dillon Light. Have you heard me Kevin Dillon Light? <laughs> Oh, dude, he's like the fucking, the, 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 the Siamese twin that was cut off and put in the attic. Oh, no. <laughs> he, oh, he, he's one of the lost Bradley brothers, man. Open your mind to me, Kevin. I'm, I'm Kevin Dillon's <laughs> mitosis brother. I'm Dylan Farnham. Yeah, going back to what Joe was saying, though, uh, Eddie in POV fucking walks over there and he just goes up to Hank and just hands him the keys to the fucking house. He's like, <laughs> wait, you're gonna, you're gonna let me just go in there? And, and use your house. He's like, okay, yeah, well, it's kind of weird, but yeah, we're gonna do it. This ain't suspicious in the slightest. And he's he's like, yeah, just make a haunted house. Don't worry about it. And he pulls up in his fucking Jeepers Creepers van and just comes up and knocks on the door. He's like, hey, I'll come on in. He's like, I'm not here to party. I'm here to give you the keys to my house um, because you should open a haunted house. And he's like, well, why the hell would we do that? He's like, you could make a lot of money. I used to be a fraternity brother. Bye. Please ignore the hanging buzz saws and the spring-loaded sledgehammers. <laughs> this fucking idiot. He's also the treasurer, this guy. Oh, and yeah. he's just giving people money <laughs> all willy-nilly and shit. Well, then, you know what? This frat doesn't deserve to exist. If it's <laughs> No. They do have a funny joke in the beginning, though, when uh, Kurt's like, yeah, Hank, he's like, you're the treasurer. What the hell happened? I thought you were going to, you know, contact them and explain things. He's like, oh, yeah, I did. He's like, I sent him a check for $14. And I said, uh, hey, we we need help. <laughs> and he's like, uh, no wonder we're in trouble now. And then the fucking Mel shit continues. And she's I, I had to write this one down because this one, like, made my brain melt. She's talking to her friend. And her friend's like, oh, you've, you've known me for seven months now. You got to tell me what the deal is with your boyfriend. <laughs> and she's like, uh, but I love him. And, uh, and she's like, oh, she's uh, she's like, oh, he is ignoring me or whatever. And she's like, well, fucking dump him. And he's like, but I love him and I want to spend time with him. And I can't dump him because we've been dating for six months and I've known you for seven weeks. Yeah. And that's that's it. I think that, I think that's like the, the, the length of the story because then she starts to go like, fuck that that Dylan, the, the fucking mutant Dylan brother. Well, that's her whole plan is to get him jealous. And like, you know, he almost blows it. Like he finally like gets the fucking hint right before she's about to get in bed with this guy and is like, yeah, oh, actually I love you. And she's like, I was waiting for you to say that the whole time. Right up to this moment where I was in bed with another person. I never would, I never left you the whole time. And he's like, I would literally say anything for you not to have sex with somebody else and just be faithful to me or whatever because I can treat you any way that I want to. So I'll say whatever I have to to get you to not leave. <laughs> yeah. But at that point, like, they already have the, the parties already rocking and, you know, they're charging people five bucks this time. Oh, dude, it's so funny, too, because when they go to the house, they have a key and they open the fucking door and the door just falls down. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, the one guy's like, oh, good thing I had a key. The night before, the, uh, so they spend, there's like a big montage of them like putting the fucking, you know, dressing up the house for the haunted ween party and it, it, the haunted ween theme kicks up that we were talking about. <laughs> it's a haunted ween. It's a haunted ween. This movie had the audacity to do a musical montage that runs all the way through at like the 40 minute mark. I was like, are you fucking kidding me right now it's like it's like 10 minutes man of film <laughs> they also had local band the side at the fucking party just up there just playing some of their original music for like 10 minutes in the middle of the movie i love i love too because like at the at like again at the 40 minute mark we finally get the backstory like everybody gets the plot dump from the sheriff's daughter about what's happening at the house after they've already fixed it let's go to the campfire so i can tell you about the plot <laughs> yeah while they're there she didn't say this before they went. She, but they knew it the whole time. And the sheriff doesn't even shut him down either because he comes right when they're building it. And he's like, and he's like, what are you kids doing? You don't have a permit. And he's like, well, we got the keys, man. Some guy gave it to me or whatever. And the sheriff's like, yeah, well, I'll be watching you. He's like, well, this problem will work itself out. <laughs> and then he just fucking leaves. The sheriff is definitely like, I know, uh, Joe, you were saying this was just a town of people coming together to make a movie, but this was definitely somebody's friend playing the sheriff because this guy's pretty bad. Oh, I, oh, I did read that he was in some, some, some earnest adjacent thing he was in. <laughs> of course he is. But yeah, so yeah, she's explaining the whole backstory about, oh yeah, by the way. Little boy drowned here. Yeah, did you know so-and-so killed a kid in there? Much like in Halloween 5 when they find out that Michael Myers was in, you know, owned, killed his family in his house. Or in 6, excuse me. So, so she tells them all that and they're all like, oh wow, that's crazy. And then these like... I, th th these two like hippie fucking couple they, they're like all right well anyway we're gonna go skinny dipping and fuck he looks like the fucking guy from part three uh who gets his head squeezed that wears that bad sweater yes oh the one has his eye pop out and it's in 3d and it shoots at you y yeah exactly he looks like a living ken doll he look yeah, oh god you just took the fucking words right out of my mouth i'm like he looks like <laughs> pixar ken like but he, like, they walk into the lagoon and this is like you know i guess the first time eddie decides to kill them and by the way I, they're, I don't know if this cat is ripping off Texas Chainsaw Massacre, but like we'll get to something where they totally do later. But this character just wears different masks all the time. Like he's wearing an old man mask to kill these people in this point of the movie. Yeah, that's a guy. That, that's an actor going like, "Well, I got this mask. I got this mask. I got this mask." And they're like, "Just use them all." I'm kind of into it though that he switches his masks up. I, I don't hate it. I just was I was a little confused at first. It's almost like different personalities too when he puts the different masks on. Yeah, which you see more later. Yeah, he kills this couple. He takes like the one guy and he uh, slits his throat and like throws him against a fucking tree with a blade in it. Dude, he lifts him up off the ground by his face and then stabs him. He pins him to the fucking tree by shoving a machete through his throat. It's really cool, actually. Yeah, it looks really good. I do like he likes to pick people up like they're tiny kittens. He's just like, here, let's go. Like. <laughs> And then this fucking girl is just out in the water like, Come on, I'm waiting for you, I'm waiting for you, where are you? What are you waiting for? <laughs> yeah. And then it takes ten years and then he finally kills her. Oh, he like twists her head all the way around. There's actually a pretty cool uh, neck prosthetic. Again, the effects are kind of neat. Yeah. And everything's lit really well. Again, like... The production value is way more, like, way better than it should be. And then we kind of just cut to the next day, and uh, Kurt and, like, one of the other guys is like, Yeah, it was kind of weird they never came back last night. Ah, eh, fuck them. Ah, uh, anyway. Should we investigate? Nah. <laughs> I love, I love how Kurt is, he's talking to fucking Jeff Foxworthy, and they're, like, handing out flyers for the night to get everybody to come. And he's like, Hey, you know, maybe that was a bad idea. Isn't that a little weird that somebody just gave you the keys to this house? And it's like, dude, yeah, you've had the keys to this house for a week, and you guys have been, like, working on it, and now you're having second thoughts right before an open opening night? Right. Wait a second. <laughs> I also love that this uh, house is built in a way that they have this, like, perfect layout, like a fucking Disney attraction once they get it built. With the chicken wire and shit? I thought that was a cool idea. I mean, I've been to haunted houses where they have, like, skits and shit set up. Like, that's pretty common. I just... Oh, sure. It does. It looks like you're waiting on a Disney ride. Like, there's some kind of sketch happening next to you, or, like, there's a TV or something like that. Like, I think, like, Twister has, like, a big, giant display when you're on the way in. Yes. Right, right before you get to the main attraction, which I guess is kind of the same thing here. I mean, but it, but you're right, Joe. It does look pretty cool with the chicken wire, like, to separate them. I love this. Like, the idea of putting on, like, a, uh, 
you know, an independent haunt and stuff and like having these cool like setups where like there's one setup where like this there's like a mad doctor and he like has like mannequin legs where he cuts his chick in half and stuff and it's cool because it's all set up in scenes where like people can look but they it's not necessarily like anything touching you except for the hand wall they have which is kind of neat no and i i do love the audience in this or like the view or like the the attendees because like there's this doctor you're talking about he, he pulls what's very obviously some mannequin legs out of like a bed and he's like ah and like there's no blood and the crowd goes oh my god the humanity of it all <laughs> and they just walk away and then later on when people are being dismembered they're like wow it's so real oh they are they go full fucking Satan Man and Dougie in this fucking movie. Like, oh, yeah, dude. We're going to get to it in a second, but I have some fucking problems with that. This is the crowd from Satan's Den and Ghoulies 2, man. They're like, where the fuck's the rat spitting that shit all over me? But yeah, they're going through this thing, and I, I kind of love this because, you know, people are lining up for this haunted house, and it's at the Berber house, so I guess there's, you know, people in town, I guess, no, but that's never addressed. But the fucking killer comes, and he's, like, knocking people out, right? There's this one chick. <laughs> there's no there's no bathroom in this place, by the way, so this chick's just, like, peeing outside. I think this is the most, like, accurate representation of a, a lady going to the bathroom I've ever seen on film. <laughs> <laughs> well, he picks her up and fucking rocks her head on a branch to knock her out. Dude, <laughs> he fucking brains her on a tree branch. Oh, come on, guys. He gives her a cute little boop, and then she goes to sleep, okay? It's real funny. He picks her up, and he's like, boop. He drags her through the fucking John McClane uh, uh, air duct into his own secret fucking room. What is he, Batman? There's a guy doing another display where he's like a madman, you know, tying people up and torturing people. He goes out to have like a hot dog and he gets knocked out. <laughs> drags his ass in. Yeah, he fucking punches that guy right in the face <laughs> and knocks him out. Oh, it's a great shot. I laughed out loud. I couldn't believe it. So then we get to this fucking kill room that he's set up. Now he, yeah, he set up, and obviously we know, but the the audience, you know, the 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 patrons don't know. Yeah, they're all tied up, and this guy, it, you know, the killer's in there, and he's like putting on a show for them with like his fucking mask and stuff. He's like Jack Nicholson's Joker, like posing and shit. I really love this though, because like he takes the thing, the the gag out of her mouth, and she's like, "Help me! He's crazy!" Blah blah blah. And they're like, "Yeah, kill her!" So realistic, all right. You know, I, I I wasn't really hating it yet. I you know I was pretty fucking borderline, but I was like, okay, yeah, this concept's pretty good. Like, as you hear people always joke about this over the years, like, oh, that would make a good idea for a movie, and here it is. Yeah, or at least a portion of it. Yeah. But then they fucking lose me because he grabs a goddamn chainsaw. And there's a fucking Leatherface cutout on the side, and he's, like, dancing around, spinning around with the fucking chainsaw. And then the kill is actually really cool. You know, he puts a chainsaw behind the girl's neck and cuts her, uh... Her, her spine essentially killing her. Yeah, he fucking severs her spinal cord. But, like, why do we have the fucking leather face cut out in the fucking room? Because remember, point and laugh. Well, well, that's the thing. There's If you look around, there's posters for all kinds of shit. Uh, I think there's a night shift poster, a fuck, or a graveyard shift poster. Not the Stephen King one, the vampire one. Um, I'm just trying to remember off the top of my head. I know there's a Nightmare 4, and I know there's yes. the, uh, there, and there's two standees. There's a leather face, and then behind her is a fucking pumpkin head one. Yes, there is see my problem is like they're trying to have their fucking cake and eat it too is my issue is like well well, well what do you well what do you mean either, either don't have the posters or just don't do a fucking chainsaw gag when you have a literal cutout of leatherface right next to her it's just stupid oh sean's point is they're leaning too far into it oh yeah but i think that kind of adds to it because with all that stuff around it makes it more unbelievable does that make sense? No, I. it makes sense. I just thought it was stupid. It also makes this guy look like a complete fucking lunatic for being like, hey, Leatherface is my favorite. Bah, and then Yeah, like, oh, he's great. He kills people with this. Yeah, well, yeah. But the way that he kills this chick, he, he, like Sean said, he cuts her in the back of the head. But they don't, you know, it, from the other side, it might look fake, right? Yeah. Well, until you see this other guy get killed, then then I'm a little confused. This is fucking, dude. I was, I, I love. This is my favorite kill of the movie. It's actually pretty fucking funny, even though it kind of breaks reality. He puts on like a skeleton mask with a baseball cap on. New York Mets, and he. <laughs> it's all about the Mets. He lowers this like plastic sheet with like a, a fake sc scoreboard like painted on it. Yeah. He jams a baseball into this guy's mouth. <laughs> 
<laughs> which looks like shit, but okay. I love it. I think it's great. And and the kids are fucking egging him on, and he's like pretending to miss this guy's head, and they're like, strike one, strike two, and they're like, knock his fucking head off. <laughs> <laughs> and he does. <laughs> uh, okay, again. He literally decapitates this motherfucker with a baseball bat. And these people, again, are like, wow, so real. So real looking. That looked awesome. <laughs> I, I get that the movie's being tongue-in-cheek. I, I'm, I'm not ignorant to that, but no, I'm sure. still like... Come on! Like, you, I know the, fir the first kill you could maybe argue, well, they don't really see what happened. They, you could buy it, but the guy's head flew off. Like, come on! I love it so much, dude. I love it. I, and you know what? It's a, th it's a thing of, like, I feel like maybe people would be like, wow, that's great. I'm actually into that kind of weird shit. You know what I mean? Or I or people would be like, wow, that's great. Oh, my God. If I don't get out of here, I'm going to be killed. So I'll pretend that I think it's great. Oh, yeah. Ha, ha, yeah. Ha, ha, that's so <laughs> Oh, no. Listen, I'm not trying to overanalyze this too much. Because, I mean, to your point, I'm sure there were... There would be in real life people that just see it and don't even overthink it. But to me, I'm just like, that person's totally dead. Oh, yeah. No, no. To your point, if I saw that, it, like somebody get decapitated, I'd be like, wow, that's a lot of magic for a bunch of fraternity fucks to pull off. <laughs> yeah. So then, you know, the people shuffle out and, you know, they show a shot of all, all these people even like, wow, that was so realistic. Oh, that was great. Love that stuff. <laughs> yeah. So then Mel and Kurt and the uh, the Dylan brother get fucking, they get kidnapped next. This guy's got a hell of a right hook. He's just walking around just knocking people out. Just bam, bam. <laughs> Duty Three Stooges fucking Kurt and Melly knocks their heads together. So Red uh, Kentucky Fried Pee Wee comes back and he's on Kevin Dylan's cart. Kevin Dylan, uh, the... the you know, the lost Dylan brother. We got the lost Baldwin brothers, then we got the lost Dylan brother. Diet, diet, Ke diet Kevin Dylan. Oh, dude, I, I don't know. He's like Coke Zero Kevin Dylan. He's like the Elephant Man version of of the <laughs> Dylan brothers. But anyway. Oh, my God. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> he ends up getting fucking bonked and, like, a noose thrown around his neck and dragged into the fucking hole or into the John McClain hideout. And then, and then, yeah, Kurt and uh, Mel are there, and he just fucking smashes their heads together, and they get dragged in, too. And then uh, he's got his final setup, and this this one audience member fucking kills me. They reuse a shot of him because they must have been so fucking happy with it. He looks like Weird Al. <laughs> oh, yeah, hang him, hang him, yeah. Hang him, hang him, and they show the same exact fucking shot. Shot twice. I guess they just needed an extra five seconds of uh, footage. At this, uh, be, well, I gotta preface this with the fact that like Jeff Foxworthy's like out collecting money, and then he finally he's reading a Playboy, and he's like, <laughs> "Oh man, I need to go. I put this together. I need to see this mother." And then he goes into the haunted house. Right. Right. Thank God he did, because otherwise there'd be a lot more bodies. Yes. I love that. It's it, this guy is the one who's like, "Hey." <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> yeah, the lead, the guy you would least expect. So, okay, so the setup is a uh, yeah, right. You know, poor man's Dylan. He's on. He's new stuff. He's hanging by a fucking uh, cord. Uh, Kurt, like like you guys were joking about, is in a literal electric chair, like <laughs> Ernest and Ernest just to, goes to jail. And Mel is in the worst position possible. She's literally duct taped to the wall, and this fucking killer just walks up to her and starts slitting her wrists stabbing her in the stomach but first he's like taunting them and everybody's like yeah kill that one no kill that one and he's like going around with the machete like this one yeah how about this one he ends up taking a scalpel like sean said and like slits her wrists and her stomach while she's in the duct tape it's pretty horrible like when you think about it and kurt's just screaming with like a rag in his mouth yeah i, I hated that one but also like when she shows up five minutes later and she's fine <laughs> she's fine oh yeah i mean i gotta say though I'm, I'm with you guys because like i don't know if i've talked about this on the show but i have like a weird phobia of like accidentally slitting my wrist i don't know it's like a thing that really freaks me out i think it's horrifying and i i yeah yeah it's scary i'm right there with you i don't like needles either i don't like needles but i'll, I'll take the needle but the, the second a, a sharp object ne gets anywhere near that artery i'm like Ugh. oh the thought of it yeah i also hate fingernail stuff too fingernails teeth and i was good with syringes until saw two and that movie legitimately fucked me up <laughs> for about five minutes <laughs> it's gross 
Hey, don't worry, Connor. By like, what was that? Saw so four or five? They had that whole wall of syringes shoot at that guy. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> like, yeah. So I think it's saw six. The dude gets stabbed with a wall of acid-filled syringes. I was like, <laughs> God, I love this gob shit. But yeah, the uh, Colobos fucker, uh, Meatloaf, whatever you want to call him, Eddie, is fucking keeps like hitting this goddamn power strip on the uh, the electric chair to fuck with Kurt, just zapping him for like five seconds at a time. He juices this fuck like three times. <laughs> Until he starts talking like this. Yeah, you know, he's like, he just, and then like he just walks over, and hands him a Zagnut, and that's his first experience with that candy bar. And he's just like, ah, oh, Zagnut. It calms me down. What happened, Gimmins? Were you kicked by a mule? No, I was held hostage in a Halloween attraction. <laughs> <laughs> Did you like those when you were a kid, Kaminsky? No. Now, him slitting the wrist, like, I could see that from the audience perspective. You think that's fake. Sure. Sure, because it's behind duct tape. But the part when the killer just knocks the fucking chair out from under the, the fucking guy with the noose, like, there's no, did somebody help that guy? What are you just standing there laughing for? Well, it could be one of those things where, like, he's got, like, a rig in his... On, up his back. Ah, uh, okay. They're like, look, just like Michael J. Fox and Brendan Fraser. <laughs> oh, no. Just like David Carradine. <laughs> yeah, well, no, no, he died. Uh, <laughs> oh, oops. No, uh, uh, Michael J. Fox and Brendan Fraser were, I think it was Back to Future 3, and then the first mummy were both, like, legitimately being hung because the heart oh, yeah. didn't work or something like that for a couple seconds. That is so fucked up, man. Yeah. It's just like it was a malfunction, in the but still fucking horrifying. <laughs> I, I I forgot that that's a thing that uh, some stunt shows do with the longer rope. It's a bungee. It's it's a rubber rope. Yeah. So then uh, Jeff Foxworthy fucking finally walks in as as Kurt's about his head looks like it's about to explode, and he's like, "Wait, wait a goddamn minute! This ain't part of the show. This ain't part of the house." <laughs> and then they believe him. They're, they're like, hey, "It's real," and then she's like, "It's real." Ah! And then everybody runs out. Oh, the humanity of it all. This motherfucker grabs a, I don't know what, Nerf's flamethrower? <laughs> yeah, what is this thing? He has a case that says RJ McCready special and just like lifts it. In. Yeah. <laughs> that's not a dog. That's a man in a mask. <laughs> that's a man in a mask. But he, like, it might as well be the thing because he's like burning up this chicken wire and like kicks it in. <laughs> And then he's, like, coming out of the fucking John McClane air vents, and this fucking guy walks up, and he's like, nah, ah, ah, and he, like, sticks the fucking flamethrower in the air vent and just pulls the trigger. Dude, the, a killer guy skedaddles, and he, like, saves his friend by, like, Blow torching the rope and he like drops uh Kevin Dillon. Yeah. It is it is the for me it's the how in the movie. I'm like, okay, badass. Um Yeah. Yeah, and then he's like they're like they're like uh, they're like, what's down there? I don't know, whatever it is, is weird and pissed off. And then they just, you know, fucking shoot the fucking flamethrower. Yeah. <laughs> he goes, I turned that guy into fried chicken. Yeah. <laughs> what are my mama's barbecued biscuits or some <laughs> shit? <laughs> yeah, the barbecue biscuits. But what happened was is that he cooked the mask so much that it burned him on the inside of his face and left the mask intact because it's seemingly flame-proof. Yeah, just like just like Michael Myers in Halloween 2, yeah. Well, that's what I was going to say. He takes a page out of fucking Michael Myers and he's taking a page <laughs> out of Jason Voorhees by teleporting into a van that he then just, just drives through a fucking barn, barn wall and starts driving away. I love that he goes out of his way to take out the sign for, like, the, the, the house. Like, he, he has perfect clearance and he makes a very apparent sharp right and just takes out the sign. <laughs> I've always hated that thing. Production value, man. That's what I'm talking about. So then Kurt, you know, in a fit of rage, because he's, you know, like like you guys were saying, Mel's alive, but she's, you know, fading fast. And he's like, he grabs the shotgun out of the sheriff's fucking <laughs> car. I just want to address that real quick. The sheriff shows up and then seemingly disappears because there's <gasps> no cops in that car. Yeah. And Kurt fucking <laughs> takes the shotgun out of it. He's like, oh, this problem didn't work itself out. Shit. <laughs> just dips out. <laughs> and then proceeds to chase the van on fucking foot, dude. Oh, my God. Yeah, he takes like a shortcut across like a uh, grassy plain. And this motherfucker... <sighs> I don't think he. I don't think the production team knows how a shotgun works, unless this was like a Resident Evil Two shotgun that had explosive barrels, because he shoots this thing from like twenty yards at this van going at least 15, 20 <laughs> miles an hour, and it explodes like it had C four in the fucking vehicle. It's almost time. The secret code is Kentucky Fried Pee Wee. Send us a direct message on your favorite social media app for a chance to win this week's Trick or Trash giveaway. Again, the secret code is Kentucky Fried Pee Wee. And remember kids, the clock is ticking. Don't miss it.
And I, I know Sean said he, he's got a burnt face, but like this is the first time while he's driving away, this is the first time you see the killer's face because he takes the mask off and he's all fucking burnt shit on one side. Yeah. Inside of his face, he looks like goddamn uh, grilled cheese. Oh, yeah, dude. My favorite shot of the movie uh, is after they shoot him, you're like, all right, he's dead. And then, like, it's just this one long shot of this flaming van <laughs> rolling down a fucking hill. And I'm like, this guy doesn't have the fucking d decency to die quickly. Like, we're just watching this fucking thing roll down the hill and into some trees. Like, I fucking laughed out loud because, again, like, I cannot trust the fact enough. He shoots his van and it fucking blows up into a fiery <laughs> inferno, man. It's a it's a frame that is on fire and it's just fucking <laughs> rolling down a hill. And he's still driving and then it stops. Yeah. And then he's like, and then Kurt's like, oh, finally it's over. And then the fucking van starts driving away and the movie just ends. Yeah. <laughs> Somehow a better ending than Halloween 6, though. I fucking love it so much, dude. Well, I mean, can you imagine them, like, blowing Michael Myers up and he gets up and just runs away and he's on fire for about 30 seconds and then just runs off? <laughs> well, oh, that's what happens at the end of 2. Technically. And then just runs and then just runs off frame and it's his credits like he might as well be, dude. Like I would I would prefer that so much. I, I just love how the movie's just like, alright, get fucked. Get out of here. Well, okay, there's one last thing. You gotta get to the end of the credits. God damn it. At the end of the credits, a fucking title card comes up that says Haunted Ween 2 coming soon. Oh, there's been an Indiegogo for this for a minute, actually. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Like, I, I saw that as I was looking this movie up. I just about fell out of my chair when that popped out. I was like, there's no fucking way this gets a sequel. Get over to Indiegogo and support Haunted Ween 2 and make it happen. It, it, Despite my feelings on this movie, if that happens, I'd be super happy, super happy for those people because that, that's fucking wild. <laughs> I would, I would, that's, go, that's I would so, be the first in line so for that crazy. shit, dude. It's like, it's like, see you again in twenty five years. <laughs> exactly, it's like Haunted Ween H H two W, man. It's, yeah, it's the uh, it's the return directed by David Lynch. Halloween twenty Ween, Haunted Ween, Haunted twenty Ween. Well, it'd be the th it would be the thirtieth. It's not twenty. Oh, that's right. Yeah, it's thirty guys. H three W, man. Haunted 30 ween, yeah. The 90s were 20 years ago. Don't do that to me. Oh, Jesus, man. <laughs> secret of the Witch. Secret. The Secret of the Witch. Meatloaf Returns, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Spicier. Bob Ross Strikes Back. He's got cheese in his meatloaf this time. Oh, delicious. He's got some tomato soup to go with that fucking grilled cheese face. Yeah, there you go. So what treat is this in our treat bags? Um, This is a piece of nondescript hard candy that has no notable branding and or indication of flavor on it and then you bite into it you're like yeah i don't think i need this and you just kind of <laughs> just kind of spit it out and move on with your life <laughs> i i this like the level of ambivalence i felt towards the entire 50 minute stretch that we had there was just like i, I was like man like i could maybe washing my hair i could be doing other things like it's just here's this movie and i'm like and it's gonna it's just gonna fuck off the next you know 20 ish minutes because at that point it was like half hour into the, the shenanigans and then when it rolls around to the ending like admittedly the ending is hilariously bombastic like it's it's between the horror stuff the effects the gore and then suddenly like people pulling out flamethrowers and shooting shotguns at moving vehicles to 20 yards away like it's like oh okay suddenly this takes this goes up a fucking level um but uh other than that i i, I don't care for it this is um this is a one of those again one of those dollar store candies that you find that you never heard of, uh, like I, I'm gonna piggyback off that that off that off brand whatever the fuck, right? Uh, let's call it an off brand fruit chew, right? Because I'm a big Starburst fan, and you're like, yeah, I could get Starburst, you know, I could get Halloween two, or something else, but you know what? I'm gonna get that. I'm gonna, I'm at the dollar store. I'm gonna I'm gonna grab that fucking off brand high chew or whatever the fuck it's called, and I'm gonna take it home. And I don't really have any expectations for it, but I eat it, and. I'm pleasantly surprised with the flavor. So much so that I would buy the candy again. Now, <laughs> again, I said in the beginning of this episode, this is not a good film. I feel like most of the people that I know th that would watch this would probably hate it. It's fun. I, I, I had a really good time revisiting this. And um, and again, I can't stress the fact that like this is like the lowest of the low budgets, guys. Like, And the production value just it blows my mind every time I see this. Because like the, the way the, 
if you've ever made a movie or you made a short or you shot anything, if you're behind the camera at any point in your life, you know how hard it is to pull off some of this stuff. And I got to tell you, there is a this is shot on film. This is shot on 16 millimeter film and uh, the sound is really, really good. Like better than it has any right to be, in my opinion. And the lighting is really good too. And the camera movements and and uh, you know the budget uh, or I, they must have like again there was a ton of favors they must have had to call in because like there's giant fog machines when they're at the uh, the lake to like have all that fog and like big giant fucking. Uh, um, uh, Fr- Fresnel lights because they didn't have LEDs then, so like they were like these big giant fucking like uh, hot lights that they had to use to like simulate like um, moonlight and shit, and they have all of those things, and it really adds to the movie in a weird way where like there's a lot of uh, shot on video stuff that really sucks. Like I'll be the first one to, to sit here and be like, this, this is terrible. Like I can't watch, I can't watch this. Like I have a hard time watching it. Um, but this is low budget in the way that I like it, where it's very it's very honest, and they they tr- they tried really hard to make this a good movie, and I don't know if they really succeeded, but I had a really good time with it. I think the gore effects are really fun, and I don't know, definitely give it a shot. You know, check it out if it's it's on it's on YouTube, and it's one of those kind of quote unquote lost movies. Not really, since it's on YouTube, but. For a while, you could only get it on tape, and it's it's only on tape, and there's only so many copies of it. So for a long time, you couldn't watch this movie. So go go check it out. Fuck it, right? If you got some time to kill, uh, I think it's a I think it's a decent time, and I and I I had a good time, even in the boring parts. I had fun, just like listening to the <laughs> the dialogue is funny as hell. Like it's cheesy as hell. Um, I don't know. It's again, like I said at the beginning of the episode, it, this is my sauce for sure, and um and yeah, I like it. This is. This is like edible underwear, but with a caveat. <laughs> oh my god! Uh, the person you're eating it off of, they haven't bathed in a day or two, so it's not god. really a pleasant experience. Should have seen this coming as soon as he said edible underwear. And the underwear, you know, typically you would expect it to be like you know some kind of fruit flavor, like strawberry or watermelon, grape maybe. But this one's uh, got some fruit butt. Well. Not quite. This is a, you know, it's made out of Mary Jane, so it's like, it's not fun at all. It's just a total chore, a disgusting fucking chore. <laughs> this movie is the drizzling fucking shits, guys. Um, oh. This is worse than Halloween 6. Um, is it as bad as, you know, my, my famous barometer, which I, I probably already brought up in this episode, and I'm sorry, but it's not, it's no Pluto Nash by any stretch. Uh... But it's not, it's not even Devin's Ghost, because it... Actually, Devin's Ghost is better, actually. Uh, at least that movie's entertaining. Devin's Ghost has warmed up on me so much over time, or every time I think about that movie, someone doing a roundhouse kick pops into my head. I'm like, God bless that <laughs> stupid-ass movie. Like, uh, yeah, yeah. If there was if there was martial arts in the slow parts of this film, would that, would that make it better <laughs> for you? It, absolutely. Yes. Okay. Absolutely. Astronomically. <laughs> Needs more martial arts people. Uh, it's just you're getting... You, you gotta go through so much bullshit to get to anything that's worth actually seeing in this movie. Totally understand that. I just feel like this concept, again, I said this earlier in the episode, like, it's something that I've heard people talking about for years, like, you know, horror attraction, and people getting killed on it, and they don't realize it's real. Like, it's, you know, been talked about or done other times, and uh, it's... I appreciate that, you know, I appreciate what they tried to make, and like you guys are saying... Any film that gets done, more power to you, but goddamn, maybe this one should have stayed unmade. Um, this was rough, man. Like, I was checking my watch constantly, and I really never do that. And I, I really don't want to go out of my way to just sit here and just shit on an independent film. Granted, it's a 30-year-old independent film, but, you know, even still, but I just... I. <sighs> It's okay. It's your opinion. I can't recommend this one. I'm sorry. I, I usually will say at least check it out, but this one's just... This is, like, deep, deep, deep in the fucking dumpster for me, guys. Like, this is, like... This this might actually be going under the dumpster. This might actually be going under the dumpster. What if they skipped right to that 50-minute mark? I See, but you can't even do that. I think it needs some serious restructuring. I think you need to just skip, a, like... There's something to be said about introducing your characters and, like, talking about Kalibos, as much as I'm joking about the killers looking a little similar, uh, that movie does a great job with the setup. Like, yeah, you hit that point where you're feeling like it's about to wane and then it gets into high gear. This movie 
hits that point like way later than it needed to. Like I'm already waning, and then 30 minutes go by, and then something finally happens that catches my fucking interest. And then there's a another 10 or 15 minute break in between the next thing, and I'm just like, holy shit, get me out of here. Yeah, because it never even hits the mark as like a teen sex comedy either. Like in those parts, yeah. Right. No, it's the it's the worst kind of Animal House knockoff like you'll ever see. It's just it's toothless. So it's like the whole time you're eating that underwear off your partner or whoever it is, you're just you're just waiting for it to be over, and you don't want to be like rude, so you gotta eat it, you know. But uh, goddamn, just uh, you might be better off ripping it off them and just chucking it down the dumpster and just calling it a fucking night. I, is Granny Van Dam giving those out for Halloween, dude? You know she is. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, she's wearing them. <laughs> Here you go, go have some fun. <laughs> That's who Sean's eating it off of. Come here, be- come here, you curly haired sexy boy. Eat my butt with this uh, fruit roll up hole. I, da- I dare you. <laughs> you go to walk away, she's got you had shotgun point. Ah, 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 you finished the whole thing, young man. Why don't you get back here? Finish your plate there, sonny. Trick or treat. Hmm? She's, ch- she's suddenly become a southern belle all of a sudden. Now we're all doing some impression. <laughs> She puts it on, dude, you know. She's a chame- she's a chameleon. She fits into anywhere. She's just she's a social chameleon. Anything to get a a, a literal rise out of out of you, you know? She's got that predator technology, so <laughs> you don't want to mess with her. She's just after everyone being naked, that's it. I got grapes, strawberry, and raspberry. Take your pick there, sweetheart. Do you think, uh, though, you know, you're saying that she makes people wear them, and maybe even she wears them, but I feel like... Uh... When her and Charnetsky uh, get it on, I think he's the one wearing them. Put this on, you fat slob. <laughs> well, he puts fucking like chicken skin underwear on her, dude. <laughs> Eat it up, Granny. <laughs> oh my god, I fucking love that shit. You're such a dirty boy. Oh, that's chunk style for sure, baby. It really scratches the pimples on my ass, nice. <laughs> oh, cheapers, creepers, and Dobby's just in the corner sobbing. Dobby, you're gonna clean this up when we're done. Done, don't you dare forget. What's he doing here? He won't let me leave. Uh, help me, Granny. Get over here, you little elf and hootin'. Yeah, that big nose is good for something. <laughs> she gr- she's forcing Dobby to fucking eat her out. That is an image. Dobby's not enjoying any of this. I, do- I don't like strawberry. Dobby hates Mary Janes. That's all right. She's like, it's like that scene from Aladdin where fucking Iago is force feeding the salt and he's just shoving him the crackers <laughs> into his face. It's just like that. And he's, he's like, take out of underwear. Oh my goodness gracious. But uh, leave us a five star review on Apple Podcasts <laughs> or wherever you get your podcast. Yeah, yeah leave us a five star review after that, ex- and that experiment in dignity that we just spent five minutes on. <laughs> Do it for GVD. Do it, do it for Dobby. Happy Halloween, you know? You can listen, listen to the sound of our shame fluttering out the fucking windows. <laughs> <laughs> All in good fun. All in good fun. But seriously, do us a solid. Uh, support your favorite show. Come on. We already know that you heard it, so make sure you go over uh, on your uh, favorite social media platform, whether that's Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, doesn't matter. Uh, message us that uh, secret code, and that will get you another entry for the Trick or Trash giveaway this month. And make sure you head over to that Patreon, two, five, or ten dollar tiers. That two dollar tier, I gotta tell you something. There's some good stuff just for that two dollar tier. We got the we got the mini episodes coming up for this month, and we got that mailbag video up there, and we're gonna have some other special things dropping on that two dollar tier too. But it's also accessible at the five or tens, um, and if if you do five or ten, you get you net yourself some swag for sure. Get yourself that uh, popcorn fucking air freshener. Oh yeah, there you go. It's 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 nice. Dobby's gonna be hanging that on his nose after what he just went through. <laughs> and if you caught that Halloween six episode, which you should have probably listened to before you listen to this one, but um, if you head over to my spooky gay family, you can check out uh their review of Halloween 4 with special guest myself um, on that episode, Joe. Um, I'm on that episode, so go check that out and uh, give them like, subscribe, Spooky Gay Family. And uh, Joe and myself, uh, speaking of, well, it was earlier in the episode, but speaking of Hack the Movies, Tony from Hack the Movies, Oh yeah, we uh, just appeared on his Bram Stoker's Dracula episode. I mean, 
Mostly Joe, but we're both on there. You have to go listen to Hack the Movies. Go subscribe. And also check out the Mary Shelley's Frankenstein <laughs> review on Hack the Movies. We're going back to Switzerland, folks. Mary Shelley, here I come. We're, we're, we're swimming through that vaginal fluid to make the bride. We're slapping that fucking penis to our legs. We're sewing it up. And we're going to check out Robert yeah. De Niro as Frankenstein. So don't miss that. Head over to Hack the Movies and check, check out uh, Bram Stoker's Dracula and Mary Shelley's Frankenstein featuring both Sean and myself. So that's it. That's Haunted Ween from 1991, directed by Doug Robertson. If you want some more good, bad, and god-awful movie goodness, head over to moviedumpsterpodcast.com and follow us on all of your favorite social media and streaming platforms. You can also head on over to our Patreon page and sign up for the 2 5 or $10 tiers for monthly exclusive content, or drop by our merch store and grab yourself uh, some non-committal swag. Yeah, and for no money at all, you can leave us a five-star review on Apple Podcasts or wherever you get your podcasts to support your favorite show. I'm Joel Escola. I'm Sean O'Rourke. I'm Connor McGraw. Thanks for visiting the dumpster. Hey, on. Isn't that a little chancy? I mean, this is Halloween. Isn't that when all the creepy things are supposed to stock the earth? It deals with demons. Demon resurrection and those forces which roam the forest and dark bowers of man's domain. The first few pages warn that these enduring creatures may lie dormant but are never truly dead. It's Halloween, gentlemen. Halloween! Have you forgotten? They're coming to get you, Barbara. You know, it's Halloween. I guess everyone's entitled to one good scare. Trick or treat. Hi, this is Mikey. And this is Maddie. And we are the Alone in the Dark podcast. Join us on this nostalgic journey through horror where you will find top five theme podcasts and audio commentaries curated for some of your favorite horror films. If you're into celebrating the best films that came out during a certain year, then you'll really dig our class of episodes. We even repurpose lines from your favorite horror movies to create a brand new story for our special In the World of Podcasts. We bring you something different each and every episode, so let us be your video store curators. Fun is guaranteed, and there are never any late fees. Remember, you're never really alone in the dark.